Okay, we're live. So welcome. This is um, Hugh Colo TV from www.humancolony.org. Uh, it's 14th of March 2015 and I'd just like a big warm welcome to everybody. This is our regular Saturday webinar with Jim. And good news, we've got Sabrina back. Bless her. Hello. I miss her so Hello. much because she's here. So. <laughs> big welcome Hello. back, Sabrina. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, I'm glad to be back. Um, You're in an echo. Yes, we have a bit of an echo. Okay, if everyone, if anyone could uh, just uh, mute their microphones up. If not, it might actually be me, so I might be the culprit here. Uh, we're on a new laptop here, so bear with us. Um, just wanted to announce that we are planning some other events apart from the regular webinar that we are doing in the future. Also one of the most important ones we've got coming up is this Tuesday we've got a channeling webinar. So it's channeling 2.0 so if you're looking to improve your channeling skills, you want to find out more about it, get stuck in and really get, find out from the people who know, you know, get on that level, then sign up to the website. I think it costs $20 or something to join in, so feel free to get on the website, find the Channeling 2.0 post, and just see if you're available for it. We're also thinking of doing one in another time zone in the midweek, so when people have finished work, it might be a bit easier for them to come, and also it might just open up an opportunity for other people who are around the world listening into this. So a big welcome to everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in. You're all absolutely wonderful. And uh, I'd like to hand things over to Sabrina to take things away. Okay. Um, for the for the channeling webinar, for those that attended the first one, um, this is a, a chance to actually uh, practice um, channeling and give it a go and get your feet wet. So <clears throat> if you know you you feel you're ready for that step. I think you know this is this is the the webinar the workshop to attend for you. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to post them on the uh, post at the website, and I will answer your questions. Uh, Jim, would you like to say anything about it? Yes, it's at noon on Tuesday. I don't think anybody gave the time, but um, noon on Tuesday. Also. I have an exciting announcement as well. Um, there's an event coming up June 20th with uh, Krista, Rob, and myself. Uh, we're going to be online channeling for four hours. And uh, it costs $30 for the four hours. So it, we've, he's already sold some tickets for it, which, to my amazement, because it's not even close to June yet. But... Um, it's going to be a really wonderful event, and if you want to see the, uh, I'm I haven't posted my video yet, but Krista and uh, Rob have posted theirs, and they're wonderful, and uh, so keep that in mind. June twentieth is a Saturday, and it'll be from two to six, so two to six on Saturday Eastern Standard Time, I believe, on the, uh, June twentieth. So that'll be fun. Uh, and Lakesh is the invited guest for that day. So, um, and then there's the Orion Council and Ardif are the other aliens that will be there. So, and I'm sure there w might be some surprises. And um, it's uh, it's uh, been announced on Facebook a couple times. I think uh, a couple people have uh, commented on it. So. Uh, be aware of that, and I, w I look forward to seeing you there. And also, I wanted to ask if there's any particular person you wanted me to channel today, any particular uh, extraterrestrial or whatever. Yeah, I Disaster. I think uh, a strong request has been um, sent by a lot of people to me about um, getting to her so that we can get an update about um, exactly what went on with the meeting and also okay. what's going on in the colonies. So uh, a lot of people requested to occur. Yes, there's a lot of confusion there, but um, we, I do have an update. She's given it to a couple different people, so we'll we'll go ahead and do that. I'll call her. 
Yeah, really likewise. Really just people asking for um, updates on the meeting, I think. Um, there was a couple of people messaging me as well. So. <laughs> okay, very thing. good. We'll call in to Kerr for that. Yesterday, the mermaid count, uh, the Syrian mermaid collective came through um, for myself, sister Audrey, and a uh, new member, brother Thomas. I started speaking some galactic language, and then Audrey began translating, and then brother Thomas began translating and channeling, as well as brother Harris cool. started doing some chanting. Um, that was a very interesting um, uh, channel, so it'd be it'd be nice to have him come through again. It was in regards who, to who did you, water. Who are you asking for? The mermaid, the Syrian mermaid collective. Oh, okay. I've never uh, channeled them before. We did yesterday. How um, were they? How? What kind of message were they giving? Um, That's what was being. What was being given was um, it was about the about the waters, the oceans, and oh, yes. um, it was about in regards to um, Gaia is doing fine, really Gaia is fine. However, the the water really could use our meditations, our prayers, and our loving, our love light. Oh yes, I forgot. It's in the drain rack. That my thingy. I forgot to get my water bottle, so she's going to get it. <laughs> okay, like, very good. Anybody else? I would um, like to request um, if um, Metrolamis or Delilah would come through. Okay. They're from also, the Jim, also, Jim, it'd be great to hear from Lakash again as well. We haven't heard from the yes, Lakash yeah. guy in a long time. Yes, yes. yes Lakash. Lakesh, very good. Hello, I don't like Alrighty. All these do Any check. question where we get started? Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, all these do. These do, okay, very good. Okay. All right, very good. Let's, let's get started. I'll see you in a little bit. And... Um, if there's any anybody here want to make any requests that is in the room here? Um I have a small request. Hi. Yes. Hi. Um if you can uh, in the end of the session prayer for the Israeli election for our yes, guy Bougie. Sure, we will definitely do that. Yeah. We will definitely do Thank that. You. How's it going there? Uh pretty well. It's extremely amazing that he's uh, within the pool. Uh, in three days, we're gonna know if we're gonna be elected. So it's a crucial three days. Yeah. But it's gonna benefit all of us. Excellent. We will say a prayer about that at the end. Thank Very good. Not a problem. You might be able to help us lead a prayer because you would know more about it. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. Let's see who. Uh, who is with us today, and uh, I'll talk to you all later. Have a lovely time. This is Takur. How are you? Welcome, Thank Takur. You. I know that you have questions for me. Who would like to ask first? Okay. Um, Try to be specific. Yes. Um, these are a few that 
that Gordon gave me. Um, he said the the progress that was made and the the reactions from various leaders. I guess if is that specific enough? Or you want it more specific? No, I understand. Let me explain to those who do not know what the question is about. There was the meeting with the nations on the 28th of February where they had weapons pointed at our ship. They had actually threatened us because we were helping the human race. They were afraid we were getting too close. They were afraid that we were going to break the rules because one of the rules was no site-to-site -site contact because that is interaction with humanity and that is forbidden. But let me start at the beginning. Yes, different nations were there, including the United States and Russia and Israel and many others. Many China was there as well as Japan. There are many different things that they wanted to discuss and we definitely wanted to as well. The first item was the weapons that were being aimed at us. The reptilians had given the United States and other countries the technology to find fourth dimensional objects and destroy them. So we, our first bid was to take the weapons away from pointing at us so that we would not be under attack. And that's how we felt threatened. And it took 16 hours, no, I'm sorry, 18 hours. It took 18 hours for us to get them to move the weapons away from pointing at us. However, that was a great victory because they understood by our gifts of health that we were being legitimately kind to the human race. And so therefore, they had taken the weapons away from actually pointing at the ships. Many other things were discussed. The reptilians that were being advisors to the different nations were actually exposed for who they were. At least three of them were, and others were mentioned but not exposed entirely. Also, with us, I should back up just a second, with us came two humans, two Octorians, and there was myself, Dizu, and Pentium represented at the council. The humans were there to show that they were supportive of what we were doing for the world. They came in holographic form, and we did as well, because any interaction physically would have been breaking the rules, even during this conference. Yata. So therefore, there was many hours. It lasted 36 hours, I believe that is the total time of the meeting. And then we are going to reconvene in April to discuss site-to-site -site transfer. Now, some of you have experienced site-to-site -site transfer already, but it was not from Grokvik near. It You were taken to some colonies, but we did not do the transfer. Others did on their own. So, and you had to sign off on a permission slip. But we were contacted immediately by the governments and asked why we were doing this. And we gave them our assurity that it was not us that was doing this, but there was others doing it. Because our contract does not yet allow us to do that. However, that is what the next meeting will be totally about, is site-to-site -site transfer and the different things that it means to both Earth and to us. Otherwise, your governments are very afraid of it. They do not like the idea that people will be leaving the Earth. They are afraid that people will not return, will choose to stay there, or or something will go wrong during the two hours or three hours that those people are missing from the earth. Family and friends would become concerned because they are not part of the understanding that we are being helpful in training and teaching. And therefore the governments are very skeptical 
that it could be, we could do it without flaws or without the people of the other the world knowing what is going on and therefore they we have to reconsider how we are bringing this to their understanding is there any questions about what i've said so far yes um so in, in terms of of that of them being afraid of us not coming back um why are they afraid of that? That would show that there is something going on and they would lose their control because they feel that they would lose their, their control, especially if there was more than one person doing this. If it became a habit that people were missing, the people would start to believe in aliens that they do not want to believe in aliens. Those of the Christian Buddhists and all the faiths are very tied into a very close belief system and therefore they are be able to manipulate them with this system. Do you understand? Without that system of manipulation, they lose much control. Okay, and in terms of um, site to site um, to occur, um, couldn't couldn't you start with people whose family have the awareness that um, that you know they're they're talking to aliens no. or that is, that is one of our points. Another one of the points is that we are going to have a colony for those of them, the politicians, mm -hmm. who want to come and see what it's like for themselves. But they are not trusting. And so they may send some of their military people to come to one of our sites to check it out, site to site. And after that, maybe perhaps they will be more willing to trust. There are many things that we are going to suggest to them in the next meeting. Now, I have, I have already told you some have already done site-to-site -site transfer and know it, what it's like, but most do not. Most just come in the spiritual form to learn and train. Okay. Um, Dan? Hello, Tukur. Nice to yeah. be with you again. Hello. Um, on a, um, a slightly relevant note to the site-to-site -site transfer, um, what what idea would it be to um kind of what would you benefit from going? What would you be able to bring back to the planet upon you know arriving at the colonies or even if it's with a, a separate organization rather than Gert Fitner, how would it benefit us and the the humans? It would help you remember better the things that you are being taught on the colonies. Your telepathic lessons and some of the many lessons that are taught at the colonies are not being remembered. It seems like it is just not working as well with the spiritual travel since when you return they, re they give you back your final thought. However, they are understanding that sight to sight would give you a greater vision greater understanding and it would bring you the same the information back intact instead of having to have it subconscious and different subconsciously stored it would be on the conscious level do you understand yeah yeah we get that idea also the the different feelings of fourth dimension would be able to be realized for humanity in because you move from third dimension you arrive in third dimension but are prepared for fourth dimension and move into that for the classes do you understand um, yeah thank you for that uh, nitrous Yeah, yes. Uh, I don't really have a question, just in a request um, to yeah. the different um, alien beings that are organizations that are doing the site-to-site -site 
that yeah. I, that I want to go to. They are listening. However, your governments are very skeptical and very fearful of site-to-site -site transfer, even though they continue to happen, but they cannot find where the site-to-sites are taking place, but they know that they are happening, and so they are sending out certain agents to find those locations. Personally, don't give my government power over me to be able to tell me what I can and can't do. And I think many people have that. Yes. Why is that such an issue? You don't give them that power. Because it is us that they are attacking, not you. So can't you not give them that power? No, because we are not to be interactive with your species, it is not time yet. It would be very difficult to explain to the world what we were doing there at this time. Although we are helping with your ascension and with your timeline, right now is not our time to be on the earth. Now is not the time for us to be interactive with the physical world. There is limitations to our morality codes that suggest that if we were to interact too closely then it would change the path of the timeline and change the path of your earthly growth. So we do what we do from a distance. So what what is the who or what is still the, the major um, obstacle for disclosure? The major obstacle is that A, the people are not advanced enough at this point, do not believe enough without chaos. If we were to arrive now, chaos would break out. No matter in what situation we arrived, people would not understand. Therefore, there must be much education given to them before we can come to you in a way that would be peaceful. Also, we do have the agreements with your governments. If we were to go now to a place on your planet to do a first contact, we would be shot out of the sky or attacked on arrival. This would not be appropriate at this time. Now, of course, there are many species coming and going, and you have your government's agencies finding them and putting them, taking them off the earth as well. But there is too much going on right now that is not beneficial for humanity for us to arrive. Okay. Um, I do have to say that um, uh, the, the U.S. president was on a show and he neither confirmed nor denied the existence of the ETs. And he will. So, so I thought that was uh, a step in the right direction. Yes, he cannot confirm or deny because he's an honest man. He will not say because he, is, he knows what difficulties that would cause the nations if he were to admit. Plus, it would cause his own life and family to be put in a very dark place. He would be attacked because many people do not want this information out into the public, plus the people are not ready for it, and they would see it as an anti-God admission, because they believe aliens are not godly or spiritual, or perhaps they believe that they are demonic. We are confused by all the different beliefs. However, we know that we are not accepted fully yet, especially by the religions of the world. Okay, um, and and that that brings up the other question about um, how how is that seems pretty monumental. The you know many of the people in certain religions are very. Um, they have been taught to be this way. It is not their fault, really. 
From yes, I know. very early on, the words of the scriptures and the words that many prophets have spoken have been changed so that they can manipulate the people better. They will, especially in the Hebrew language, where there's many words that mean many things and can be very diverse when used in different ways so that if they choose they can change the meaning even though internally they know that it was not meant to be that way because of the way it was written but honestly can put a different word in because it would help their situation better yeah, because I know, I know a lot of them, their heart is in the, heart, the right place. Yes, I am not saying that they were malicious. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that over time, once you start changing words here and there, the meanings will definitely change. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, I get sure. excited about these things because... They are part of what we fight to clarify. Yes, I, I understand. So I get excited, excuse me. It's okay, I get excited also. <laughs> uh, sure, did you have a question or anybody in the room with Jim? I uh, guess. One moment, please. Uh, Before you start there, one moment. Certainly. There was a question in the room here. Okay. And she asked, what, what, what can we do to help? And you are already doing it. Your prayer, your fasting, your community of light comes together and brings understanding to others. It actually brings people in because they see that your joy, your peace, is something that they don't have. Continue. Yes, Tako, this is Kim. I would just like to say a very heartfelt thank you. I'm uh, very well versed on all the effort that you yourself personally have put into this meeting long before it was even given a date. Um, I honour you. I love you dearly. And I encourage you to continue because I truly believe you will achieve this along with this do and others, but I know you yourself have much invested. So I sincerely thank you so much. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate your warm appreciation. I'm sorry, I do not know another word. Your thanks, thank you. Um, Justin? It is so good to see you. Continue. Greetings, Decker. Greetings. How have you been? I have been fine. Working very hard in this difficult time. Yes. I had a question in regards to the supervolcano in, in the Midwestern states. And yeah. my journey, my journey past there, um, I felt as if I was assisted with accumulating energy on my two or three chips past it. And then I yeah. also feel as if I was guided with assistance to my new dwelling, the heart chakra of Gaia and Hawaii. Yeah. And I feel as if I have linked together the supervolcano, the first chakra in Mount Shasta, along with the fourth chakra here. And it has something to do with um, connecting the first and the fourth with the violet flame and yes. with dispersing the energies throughout Gaia. Let me, let me put some clarification on that. Thank Mount Shasta has become a great central location. Many people are being drawn to it at this time. The civilization of people that live under Mount Shasta have a great deal to do with the control of that seismic and volcanic area. Do you understand? Um, the reason you can feel that energy is because 
And there was a point last year where that area was very volatile. It is becoming less and less volatile as we speak. However, it is still a great area of great energy. If it were ever to erupt, the timeline would cease if it erupted to its fullest capacity. It was the largest volcanic eruption the Earth ever saw, taking in more than hundreds of miles. We cannot even actually tell you exactly at this point. But because there are so many activities going on and it changes constantly through the ages. But according to our studies, the original volcano was probably 300 miles across which is a huge, and then it affected, of course, much greater areas than that. So, yes, your feeling of energetic and your connection to the first and fourth ch chakra were necessary for to give the energy that was necessary for this area. Continue. I think you had more to say. Yes. Um, there has been... I feel as if a a stargate and a portal I've been working on in my side yard, walking in a counterclockwise spiral, and two trees before as a entrance, if you will, to this. And after yes. walking in the spiral, I sit in the middle of the field, begin to do sun staring, build my channeled crystal grids. I feel as if this has been a stabilized portal or vortex um, and I'm wondering what ideas you could share that would be useful to apply this that we could use to help Gaia with helping Hukalo with with anything. Yeah. There are 12 major stargates and many minor ones. This one that you have found is a minor stargate. They are not open fully at this time. They are open to a point you understand? You can feel the energy of them, and you can know that they are a stargate, but they are not fully open until the skulls come together. But anyway, in this area, you will find much energy. The heart of Gaia in Hawaii is full of energy, and whatever emotion you take there amplifies. Whatever thoughts that you feel in fourth dimension amplify there because it is the heart chakra and it will resonate with all the things that are you there. Do you understand that? You become part of the heart of Gaia and therefore you will resonate with her there. But keep your thoughts in positive realms because then it will be amplified. If you go to negative realms that negativity will also be amplified there because it is such a vibrant place, such an active, many, many different vortexes there of positive energy. However, be very careful that you keep in a positive frame in, for the most part. Of course, humanity does fall into negativity of, at times, but if you're near the vortex, try to stay very positive which I oh. believe you do. Oh, yes. I have been more excited and happy and just yes. peaceful and serene. And, and that Stargate will, will be active for you one day. Thank you. Yakawash. Nitrous. Ito. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, there are um, uh, members of us here in Hukulo who found out of an aquatic race of beings who are said to be beyond the orbit of Saturn and that they need uh, some help. Yes. Are, are you familiar with this? we have given them some help. The help that they need is aquatic. They, their space is not, has been contaminated in some degree 
And so we have helped them with decontamination of some of their space. However, more is needed, and we need more cooperation with them to be able to help them farther, further. Far, is, is further or farther? Further. Either. Um, we have helped them with some decontamination. What else is, is it that they are requesting from us? We have not heard anything else. Yes, because we were told that um, they needed uh, things or a certain element in the water. Yeah, it, is called cadmium. it is cadmium. 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 Yes. Excellent. We can, uh, we can supply some of that. It will be artificial, but it will do the same job. It will be made by us in our replicators, as you would call them. We don't call them that. They're vibrational recreations. Yes, we will contact them to see if this is the case. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tucker. Dan? Okay. <clears throat> If Dan doesn't yeah. come, I will. I'll, 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 I don't have any questions right now. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yucko, one, um, quick one, one quick one. One quick one. Yeah. Uh, Shara, do you want to ask a question? Uh, yes, if it's okay. Go ahead, sure. Hello, Tucker. How are you? Sure. How are you? I'm extremely fine. A bit That's anxious about the election. Yes. Your yes, candidate I is am. winning. Hmm? Your candidate is winning. Yes, hopefully he will win in a much more uh, vast uh, voting. Yes, yes, we are helping. Oh. There Maybe are certain things that must happen. Only the appropriate people for your timeline can be put in because if the timeline were to cease, which it will not at this point, it would be harmful to the entire universe. I know that yes. you are not aware of your place in the universe, but the whole universe is depending on this timeline for certain things. Yes, I do believe that Bougie will be a much more helpful than Benjamin Tanai. Yeah, da. Um, I want to ask you another question, a quick one. Yeah. Um, last week, my mother saw a being. Last uh, Friday, seven o'clock night time. Some kind of a, a monk. On a, uh, on our porch, he was uh, a bit uh, frightened because it's been a long time since she saw something like that. Was it a hooded creature? Yes, a brown yeah. hooded creature. Yes, I understand. That was actually some a species that lives under your earth, under the surface. Uh, do you know why they came to her? Why did she saw him? I can find out, but I do not know. Um, well, she's a bit worried. Where? If you can do it, it would be much appreciated. One moment, please. I can check something for you to see if that has been recorded. Usually the spotting of any alien or subterranean is reported in some way or another. And since she is relative to you, it is probably recorded. Yakawa. <sighs> There is a reason, but I cannot announce it. 
Is it positive or negative? It is a positive reason, but it still cannot be announced. Okay, maybe in a private session? Perhaps. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Greetings, Roy. Dear. Greetings, Takara. This is Rowie. Rowie, how are you? I'm excited, as always. It's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. And yourself. I would like to ask about some of the events that are happening in Russia regarding Putin at the moment. Are you able to give us any, any more of a picture of what's happening in Red Square and the events in Russia, the big announcements that are going to come? You're, you are aware that he is being guided by reptilians. But, yes, um, it is a dangerous this. time. Yes. But he is being guided by reptilians. In fact, he has given his will over to them just recently, however. He has broken free of them a bit. There was one thing that they had done that he did not agree with, and so it pulled him out of his state of trance. As you know, when you look at him, he has no emotion on his face whatsoever. Uh -huh. But he has come out of it a little bit and is trying to make something better. He discovered he had not been told or was not aware of how his people were actually being treated and how poor and bad off they were. And this has come into his understanding. It was revealed to him by someone in private. And he looked into it and came out of trance to help this position a little bit. However, his position on the war has not changed. Because he believes that he wants that to be his own. And this has been told to him by many of the reptilians that are around him. That this should be his and they've given him many reasons for it. However... He will try to take care of his own people a little better. Yeah, there's been a quite a few scandals um, coming up and popping up. There seems to be someone trying to discredit him as well. Um, it's interesting to see his much, progress um, much take a reversal as well. Um, but I just wanted to see if you had any more sort of understanding. And I have a follow-up question. Were Russia at this meeting? Yes. Were there representatives? Yes. There was Russian representatives, yes. Roger, okay, thank you very they much. They are the most fearful of all the countries of site to site because of the reptilian influence. Also, China is very, very adamant against it as well. Why is the United this, States I mean, has Russia become and... more neutral about it, but still are against it. Uh-huh. Not yeah, as Russia has always been very Russians aggressive on many fronts of, uh, of let's say, psychic phenomena, um, channeling, these types of things. So I was quite surprised to find out that they were being held back a little bit by Putin, who does seem to, when he talks, he does seem to talk in a very honest way, in a very open way about events in the world today. Yes. He is not even aware that what he is saying is negative. Uh -huh. That is all I can comment on at this time. Thank you, Sakura, for your time. And you can see the some of the things that he has done. But there are many other things that he is doing that concerns us. Yeah, I can understand. There's a there's a lot of issues there with the um, uh, let's say homosexuality and gay rights. They so seem to do a big 180 on, on a lot of the way I saw Russia was going. Um, but thank you for that, Tika. That's 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 really yes. helpful. You are welcome. Which country is most supportive? The countries that are most supportive are smaller. France is now more supportive which is surprising because at first they were very adamant. England is now more supportive as well. 
Iceland is supportive. But there are more that are less supportive than supportive. Kim's asking me about Australia. Australia is neutral at this time. Thank you. Um, to Kurt, um, I was wondering if you could give us an update on our weather. Um, over here on the East Coast has been a bit, uh, lots of snow. <laughs> Yes. Well, if you have noticed, we have moderated your temperatures. They were supposed to be much warmer at this point, and the snow would have melted much faster, causing flooding and much damage. So we have moderated the weather. Even when they predict higher temperatures, they do not go as high. Have and you noticed this? Yes. And then in South America also, um, there's been earthquakes. Yes. We have told you that we were concerned about South America at different times. And these have been lessened by us, been made less. I am not sure how to say that. Less severe, yeah. Less severe, yes. Yes. Um, what are the Yamaka? Go continue. Okay. Um, also, there's the the booms and screeches that people hear. Uh, can you speak a little bit about that? About the what? The booms, like these, like really loud sounds, and sometimes there's a screech that it sounds like a a train, like stopping really fast. Like there are some species that have ships that make these sounds when they move quickly out of the atmosphere. Even in fourth dimension, they can still make a third dimensional sound. Now, some of these booms are being caused intentionally, and others are not. But the ones that are being caused intentionally are for attention to the sky, because there is something happening that they want you to pay attention to. There is many sightings around the world of orbs at this time and of ships, and they're becoming greater and greater. Many civilizations, many species that are from many parts of the galaxy are now coming to Earth to watch your ascension, to watch this time, because this is the time period, time being relevant to third dimension that you will either survive or not and this is what they want to see if you are going to survive and we believe according to many things that we have seen that you will so when you said there are there are many things that the universe is waiting for from this timeline can you be a little more specific about that there is something in one moment. I can tell you that this part. There is something in the blood that strengthens other species as well. They are waiting for your hybridization in some ways so that some species that are dying will not do so. But that time has not yet come for you to be giving your blood to other species. Okay. okay. And um, what there about... There are other things as well, but continue. Yes, I, I figure you'll just tell us whatever you can. <clears throat> um, you know, when they see the, the... When they hear the booms, they also hear a light in the sky sometimes. They see a light, yes. Yes. This yeah. is correct. That is what they are wanting them to see, yes. Okay. Now, how how is that happening? Because in one household they hear it, and then in the next household they won't hear. It depends um, on the activation of fourth dimensional energy within the mind. Those with higher 
activation levels will hear it. Those with lower activation levels will not. It is dependent on whether the, they have become part of the ascension yet. If they have become activated and understand that they are activated and that the ascension is going on and they have been moving forward in a, a faster pace, then they will be able to hear it and see it. Those people who have not are still moving forward in their ascension, fourth dimension, but are not aware of it, move much, much slower. Do you understand? Yes. They still move forward, but they are much, much slower, and they are not aware of some of the many things that are happening around them. Okay. Um, now, are any of the uh, new species that are are coming, um, have you been able to have any of them help you? We are in contact with all species, well, all species that are friendly. Many species we do not know. There are species around the Earth at this time that we have never been in contact before with. And we are trying to make some contact with them. Not all have been successful. We also talked to a couple negative species as well, just to convey information that they will not be successful and why. Okay. Now, have you been able to talk to the Fandorians? The Pandorians? Fandorians. The Fendorians, yes. We talked to the Fendorians, the Hiroshians, many of the species that you know about, yes. The Reptilians, there's three species of Reptilians, one species of insectoid that we speak to. We do not speak to all Reptilian species because they will not communicate with us. However, we do speak to every species of greys, including the clairs who are under the Pacific Ocean at some time or another. We talk to the federations of light. We talk to many other groups that are fighting for your timeline to continue. We even talk to the Anunnaki and Illuminati. Anunnaki are not necessarily against the ascension, but they do not want it to come as quickly. They fear that that would be detrimental. Okay. Um, and can you, say, can you say anything else about the Anunnaki's? Like what? In, in terms of our ascension. Uh, ascension. There's different phases, different facets of Anunnaki and some are helping with ascension in some ways but not in others and others are wanting to keep it static and have it not move as quickly. Of course they know that it will continue to move forward but they want to keep it very slow because they feel a fast ascension will be detrimental to the human race. However, it will not be. The quicker you rise, the more you will understand about the next part of your evolution, which is com coming soon. Okay. And um, this, we feel if, if you stay in your darkness, some of you are out of the darkness now, but not completely. But to stay in the darkness that is... Earth is detrimental, we feel. Continue. Okay. Um, also, in, in terms of the colonies, can, can you give us an update on what's happening there? Because as you said, you know, a lot of people are not remembering um, what's happening there, so... Uh, yes. Many 
still do not remember what happens on the colonies. And so that is why we want the site to site transfer. Some are awakening little by little as their fourth dimensional energy increases. Then there, so does their subconscious actually awaken a little more. Because you see, let me explain something. Right at the moment of when you're falling into sleep, you will notice that your telekinetic powers and your psychic energy is strongest right then. Because how many times, how many have said, I, the, why is it that my bed rattles? Why is it that the lampshades move? Why is it that things happen around me and sh that shake when I just am about ready to fall asleep? And that is your fourth dimensional energy awakening these things within you that you cannot yet control. Do you understand that? Okay. okay. So, what, what else did you want to know? I, I got carried away there. <laughs> oh, well, the reason you can't remember, as I've told you many times, is they transplant the last thought before you leave in back into the brain so you won't be traumatized when you when you return because two hours away from your bed in spirit time is like five days so it's like you're gone five days and if they would not implant that last thought even in your dream state or even in any state that you're in you would be traumatized when you woke up and found that you were in a totally different realm because it was there was so much impact there. Do you understand? Oh, okay, because that's what I was going to ask. Why not leave the last thought out? Because you do not want okay. to wake up and be traumatized. We did leave it out on the first group of people, and several of them went into psychosis. Okay. okay. So it was not a good thing, and we did not want that. I can so say found a way to correct it. Yeah, it can be quite distressing when, when this actually happens to you and you realize you don't even know where you are, you don't even know what country you're in. Um, so I, I can And it doesn't that. seem familiar anymore because you were somewhere else for five days. And then you're all of a sudden somewhere else. Oh, I see. I see what it is. And some think they were going mad and drop into a state of uh, depression, psychosis, different things to occur well, and several of them yes um, to occur this is what's occurring with my twin friend okay. I'm hearing many voices yes please to occur okay. I feel this is this is occurring with my twin friend um Justin, can you let Sarah go first? Oh, you know, it's just one quick. First, okay. I was wondering if you've contacted the civilization, the Pontus, from around the Ursa Majora constellation, around the Polaris star? We have been in contact, yes. Yes. With uh, Fort You have sent us messages about that, yes. We have... We listen to what you say as well, so we have been in contact with them. Okay, and in regards to what you were just speaking on and the return from the trips, I've been seeing these symptoms yes. with my twin flame that I'm with that I just reconnected with in Hawaii. Yes. This occurred This is time. not something that we would wish to happen to anyone. So it is possible that this is, she was one of the more sensitive to the psychosis that can happen without the last thought being transplanted. Is there any, what are some things that I could do, that we could do to... Intention meditation will help. Also, there, have she been checked for the balance of the chemicals within her system? No. Chemical balance may be part of it as well, because if the chemical balance has been thrown off by transportation, even in some senses in the astral plane, they can be rebalanced. 
try to rebalance her chemical situation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Much love. Much love. Much love. Kura Oashi. Bondi Zabas. Moshi Deha. Tarian Kora. Kova Bas. Santa Quasia Ba. De me to hoti me that would be that in the whole of G. And yes. Namaste. Namaste. Hello, Tucker. Continue. Much love, Tucker. Sarah. Much love. Ah, Sarah, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, we had a channeling yesterday from a Syrian myrrh beans on this planet. Myrrh beans. Yes. Do they have another name? Mermaid. We don't know their name. They were calling up for help for the seas and the oceans. Ah, yes. And that is where Mother Gaia is in the most pain, yes, in her oceans. Because there's much radioactivity in the Pacific Ocean now. And it continues to seep in because these are not sealed from the irradiation that is going in. There has been some taken out by the Clares because that is their, their environment. And they are very sensitive to it. So they have actually been helping humanity, even though they're not a very helpful race. In this sense, they have been because radioactivity is not something they want around their domed cities at the bottom of the ocean. So therefore, they have taken some of it out. However, there are many species that have been hurt by the, this radiation. We have tried to help during the earthquake and during the times when there was major disaster happening to help things come in a safer way. We helped the reactor not to explode. We helped the earthquake to settle down in a faster manner because it was going to be even a higher residence. The whole Yakata island moved eight feet that's a huge amount for any large island as that to move at one time. Do you realize that? Yes. So therefore, we were there and tried to help. However, help is still being done in the oceans. And they're aware that we are helping. It's just not enough at this time. They were saying something about the the crystals from the from the land yes. could help the oceans, and I was wondering if you had some idea about that. Yes, we can do some redistribution and make a grid for the ocean. That is a good idea. We did not think of that. Okay. We actually just were working on the fact that we are not allowed to be interactive. However, we can move some rocks and stones and make a grid that would be helpful to the ocean, specifically the Pacific Ocean. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you so much. Um, another question about some beings, um, as far as we were able to get, was they were behind the planet Saturn. We've been... Yes. Um, helping they them. Are in, they are needed of... One moment. Mm -hmm. Sarah, yeah. Justin asked about them. Oh, yes. you did? Okay. Thank you. They are I in need of that. cadmium, correct. I understand yes, that. Yes, cadmium is what they are in need of. And to there is what God wants. 
their space has been contaminated. Mm -hmm. I must go now. All right. Thank you so much. I love you. There is something that needs attention. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Tucker. No more. What for Han? Um, what's wrong? What we hear on what to to us Blessings upon you as well. I I speak f peace from my people. I am Metrolamus. Welcome, Metrolamus. We have learned much since our last meeting, and that you are part of us and there are questions for us who had a question uh, I did uh, hello Metro Thomas good to speak to you again yes thank you Um, I'd like to ask, uh, how do you have fun? What do you do for fun on your world? There are many things. There are much enjoyments on our world. We are a light third dimension, much less stressful than yours, as we understand it. We went through a period like you have, but... we realized that it was unproductive and therefore education is fun for us transference of energy is fun for us in the sense that healing is transference joy can be transferred thoughts can be transferred that can help others Reaching out to other people in the universe, as we are doing now, even in our third dimension, we are slightly ahead of Earth in its evolution. Our telepathy is slightly better. Our technology is 160 years ahead of yours. But we want to be helpful to you if we can. And it has been told to us that since we are so close in your evolutionary state, only 160 years apart, pretty accurately, as we can communicate with you in a way that you might understand better. As you know, we are a canine type species but that does not make us your pets even though you have pets that are canine like species as well we are of a different origin and we find it rather amusing We do not have any pets that resemble human beings. 
However, it would be acceptable. But we know that you are not in that position to be treated that way. We have Eltons, Sicutes, Oramentans. That would be a bird-like species, also a pig-like species, and a wolf-like species. We also have fish in our oceans, and sometimes smaller fish can be put in captivity for our amusement. Do we eat fish? Not often. Do you eat animals? We are more vegetarian at this point. But there is some meat we do eat from very wild species of animals. But we do give thanks for their sacrifice. We are able and willing, yes. I would love to learn myself. <laughs> Once we are able to do that, we have not perfected transference of energy to your physical bodies. We have perfected how we can speak to you. I'm sure that it will get even better in the future, but at this point, it is acceptable. The last time we spoke, there was a factor of the unknown that played into our conversation, but that has been overcome, and we are willing to speak to you freely. Metrolamas? Yeah. Hello, this is Sarah. Sarah, uh, yes. Yeah. I, I was wondering, for those who asked to come to your planet, have we been there already? Not yet. Okay. It will happen soon. Okay, very well, thank you. Your governments do not know where we are located and cannot harm us. We are speaking from our planet and when we transport you, it would be a folding of space-time. Um, not, if, not if we do it correctly. It's based on mock principles. I know you know what that is. I see it in your brain. Mock principles are those that say you can create a wormhole because they were created from the beginning of time and some exist in molecule form and can be stretched and manipulated into larger forms that can be handled with limited amount of energy Martina? Can I hear, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm not Martina, but I'm using her Google account. Thank you for the time, for the question. Uh, I wanted to ask, we talked before with Tikur about uh, crystals and energy. Um, I'm really interested about crystals and the capability of the crystal powers and my question is because of the radiation uh, that is spread out in Japan and everywhere probably all over the world um, what we can do as a people can we use the crystals to make the radiation go away 
you can lessen it. You can change its half-life. Do you understand where I speak? These, the half-life of radiation is, can be up to millions of years. However, with the crystal grid, it will lower the half-life and therefore lower the danger of the radiation. There is nothing known in the universe that can actually make it dissipate faster than that. There are things in the universe that can protect you from it and make it less harmful to you. But to actually dissipate the radiation as, as it is, is not completely possible. Is it possible to connect to the frequency of uh, non-radiated water in order to transmute the radiation? The radiation can be removed but it does not die. It can be removed and put somewhere else, but that place then will have the radiation. Now, vibrationally, it is in flux and therefore very hard to move. Do you understand? Because in order to move something in flux, you must be able to move in exact flux continually to move it. Radiation, as it dies, sends out its molecules and therefore this is how it operates, like it does not remain the same from one second to another. And therefore, you would have to anticipate perfectly the vibration of radiation to move it and it would take a very very fast calculation to be able to understand what I am speaking of. Do you understand what I am speaking of? Oh, I do, I do, Mr. Manamis, yes. Very well, thank you. So therefore moving it at this time is almost impossible it has only been done by one species, and they are not around your planet. Uh, luckily, we've discovered some uh, fungi which is able to soak up radiation. Um, yes. So there are organisms on our planet which are helping to do it. Also, the sharks cannot get cancer, so when they ingest the cesium, which is coming from this melted down reactor, this is actually, uh, the sharks are actually helping to clean up the ocean. So give you thanks to the sharks. It will eventually mutate them, however. Oh, really? Yes. It, okay. Although they do not become sick, radiation does have effects on biological phenomena and will eventually change it. A fourth dimensional earth, perhaps, yes, but you do not have the energy in fourth dimension to do so yet. Interesting thought patterns. Yes, I believe that could work eventually. It has not been ever done, to my knowledge. Um, can someone repeat that into the microphone because we did not hear? I uh, said, so what if you were to consciously recreate a brand new Earth without the radiation? And I gave a... It is possible, but you do not have the cooperation or energy at this time to do so. I am not aware of any planet that has done that because dying planets usually are too far gone to be 
if if they are duplicated, much of the negativity is duplicated with it. Oh. Interesting. Yes. Martin, did you have any more questions? I am sensing your curiosity with me, what I look like, <laughs> and things of this nature. I am a bipedal being. We know that you think we have tails that wag. And floppy ears. Not all dogs have floppy ears. But actually, some of our species does. But tails, we still do have the protrusion of a tail. They are much smaller and serve no function. Is there anything you would like to ask us? Your bodies. How do you live with the body the way that it is on your planet? Is it, it looks rather heavy to me. It's a little difficult for us to compare since we've never been to another planet. But Our bodies are rather thin in comparison to yours. We are smaller creatures. How high However, would you measure yourselves? But it's we do not have the a great amount of gravity as you do. But we yeah. feel that you are heavy. Yeah, I think what ends up happening is um, people adjust because the, the, the weight it's gained over a period of time. So the, the we are person sober. adjusts to the weight. We understand you do not have litters, as they are called, and do not hatch from eggs, literally. These are no. things that are curious to us. Is your species hatched from an egg? When? No. But okay. we know many species near us that do hatch from eggs. How do you birth? We uh -huh. give birth to several children at a time, three or four. It can be determined, but we do not like to do that. What? Purpose what is the gestation uh, period? Children at the same time. Two questions were asked at once. Sorry, Sabrina. I was asking what was, what is the gestation period? In your time? Yes. Twelve weeks. Oh, that is that is fast for us. Ours is nine months. Yes, we know. Machilamus, what does it serve the purpose of your species to have so many offspring? Is there a lot of danger that some of your offspring do not fully mature to adults? There is one of the offspring that is given away for study. The one that does not mature. In our language, we would call that the runt of the litter. Would that be correct in yours? Grunt. Runt. R -U -N -T. Runt. The weakest. Runt. Yes, the weakest of them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And they are not happy being that weak, and so we give them for study. Although we do love them, we love our species as well, and we'll we have three other children to love after the fourth. What do you mean by you give them for study? Like they go to somewhere outside of the family or like yeah, they go they're trained differently? And be, they're trained and studied differently 
and made to become happy because they are not happy as the weakest in the litter. So do they um, grow out of being runks? Do they become healthier? Yes, and they are with others of their own kind, and therefore they are happy. But they're separated from the family from, for the rest of their lives? They visit if they wish, and many do. Does any of your species come to Earth? Yes. Are there any here at this time? Not at this time, presently. Do they ever get reintegrated back into the family? If they wish. If the family would like them back, they will take them back. And many times they wish to be on their own because they end up to be the greater of the litter. Metrolamus, I have a interesting question. I want to see if you have any knowledge on this. As we keep dogs and other animals as pets on this planet, are humans kept as pets on any other people's planets that you know of? Let me say this first. We do not have any human pets, nor will we ever. However, there are pets that are humans on two other planets that I know of, but they are considered very rare pets. I expect they're quite awkward, huh? That was an awkward question because I realized that you are sentient and intelligent beings and that might be insulting. Uh, from my understanding personally, I believe that all the animals on this planet we inhabit, what's called Earth, um, are intelligent beings of those creations as well, somewhere else out in the universe. So I'm yes. fully acceptance of it going both ways. Personally, maybe others are not, but I am. I understand. Uh, thank thank you. you for that, Sharon. Brian, do you have a question? Greetings, guys. Hello, my friend. How are you? I am fine. My How are you? Bri my name is Brian. Brian. Yes. yes, you you spoke of about you your civilization being about 160 years ahead of us. Um, yeah. My question was, um, you talked ab about before about uh, time, like uh, time travel, or how we can come to your planet. How far in the future of our evolution would the uh, the um, the average human being on Earth on this planet? What can you give us a time a time period on when we would be allowed to come to your planet? You already have the technology, but it is not shared with everyone. You will be permitted to use it perhaps in a hundred years. Okay, okay. But the technology already exists in many different forms and has been around your planet since the 1900s do also do you do you guys have mostly do you just use the um, oh uh, stargate technology or do you have ships also that you come to and fro to planet to planet ships we yes. find that sh our ships have been obsolete for a while. There is much dangerous space around us. Okay. Gaseous pockets and elemental gravity pools that are not seen, but we can detect them now. But 
we have stopped using ships for a while because they would all be destroyed by natural space phenomenon. Hmm. It's interesting. Well, that is all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sabrina. Kim? Thank you. Kim. Yes, hello. This is Kim. Um, yes. I have a question from one of our precious membership named Caroline. Um, she's wondering if it's possible for her to visit your planet. Yes. Possibly if any of any humans within our group, perhaps. Yes. We are planning to bring some of you to our planet. Well, that's very exciting. And that will be not far in the future. Thank you very much. I look forward to it. <laughs> You may bring your animal. Oh my goodness. If you wish. That's your animal welcoming. might not be liking our planet. It might be fearful to them. But we do breathe something similar to your oxygen in third Love dimension. That. You will have to have some breathing apparatus, but it won't really be that hard to design. Our atmosphere is similar. We hope that you remember. You will come site to site, so you should. It will be a folding, a creating of the wormholes, and you will go through it. There's many ways to travel. We have not perfected some of the more advanced ways, but we see them as we move forward. I had a question real quick on that again, the site to site again. Um, do Say uh, one of us wanted to visit. Do you put a field around our body when we're sleeping? How does that happen? Actually, there would be a chemical injection to stimulate the movement of molecules within your body. The vibration then would be much easier to move in a water-like state. So it speeds up the vibration of the body then? Yes. Ah, interesting. Almost like the Makarba. And then it is easier to move through because the energy would be harmful to the state that you are in, but not right. to the state that it could be moved. Now, the difference between that and radiation is radiation is always moving out away from itself, where yours would be still within the human form. That's really How long would you like to go? Uh, if I was going to personally go, it would probably be maybe just for a week to visit, maybe seven days. That's interesting. Interesting. Thank you. We might not be as pretty as your dogs. We do not look as nice. I am sure. We are thinner and have interesting expressions. So a week to visit you would be how much in our time? We can manipulate that with the help of Grokfik Nier if they would help us. We're following rules at this point. Yes, we see that. Well, blessings to you. Thank you. Much love. Thank you. Blessings. You I have a question. Yes. Uh, um, yes. Uh, my question is, um, um, uh, uh, my question was about um, sexuality. Uh, what does it mean to you? 
it means a great deal in third dimension to all third dimensional beings. From what we have gathered from Earth, it means the same thing to you as it does to us. It is a way of pleasure and of reproduction, and it's a, a way of expression. It's also a way of many other things that you intend. And I must uh, move last on. question is, that's fine. Well, what is your last question? Uh, yes, it's about the uh, smelling. Uh, you said smelling was one of the things that you do socially. Um, yes. Do you ask? Well, do you, uh, do you ask that you're going to sniff, or do you just sniff people? If if you have to ask, it's not worth the sniff. We just sniff. It's polite. If you don't sniff, it's not polite. <laughs> if you can I turn off your nose and turn it up and walk by, that is saying that you do not want to associate with that person. Hello. So sniff you me you? when you come, <laughs> and I will sniff you. <laughs> um, I want to say. Yes? Yes. It is only polite to sniff. Uh, I want to ask, can you hear me? I am hearing you. Uh, I want to ask if I can also visit your plant if it will be possible. Yes. Thank you. We will know who. We, we have all the contact information for your human colony members. You must be a member to be able to go. I so am. join because that's how we get your information. And then we will take those that have requested because we will see it in your mind. But now I must go. Well, I want to thank you for coming and for being so generous as to offer taking us to your I planet. Thank you. I feel like I am boring compared to other aliens that you speak to. No. No, you're no, not. No way. No, 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 no. I will go now. Thank you for your hospitality and greeting me and letting me speak. It's been and a thank pleasure. you for your hospitality. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Many sniffs. Many sniffs. Many sniffs back. Many sniffs. <laughs>
maybe if you want to get some lunch, Jim, and maybe we have an after hangout if you want to join us back in a bit. Maybe the people will um, stay around later. I have, I have some plans for this afternoon, so I'm not sure how soon I can yeah. get back to you. But I would love to come and see what's going on later. So. Sure thing. So I have a friend that ha is having a birthday party, so I'm going there this afternoon. So. Okay, enjoy yourself. Party, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, my friend is having a birthday party, so at one thirty I have to be there, or he's coming to pick me up at one thirty. Nice. Ah, groovy. Have a good time, Jim. Well, yes, enjoy thank yourself, you so too. much. I love you all. And um, there was a couple more things that the canine species wanted to say at the end there, but he just sort he said many sniffs, but there was a bunch of stuff after that. Uh, I heard the many sniffs, but uh, I didn't hear all the other things. He was saying other stuff. So uh, was it, there was something you else that he wanted to add to that. What? Was it something like, may the snort be with you? <laughs> Sorry, it's all that Colony 5 train. That's a possibility. I think he was adding on to many sniffs and something else. It was... More than one thing, so <laughs> so I'm not sure what else it was. So I can't tell you. Many sniffs and licks. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they don't lick. Yeah. Yeah. There. Would you say? I, I didn't said hear they that. don't lick. Oh, they don't lick. All right. It couldn't be that well, then. From what I know, their form of uh, their form of kissing is a uh, nuzzling of the nose and uh, nuzzling of the neck. That's how that's their form of kissing, as far as I know. Oh, that sounds nice. Nose and neck. That's good. You know, that's it. Put on some doggy cologne and <laughs> nuzzle your neck. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever. All right, who wants to give a close? Oh, oh, oh. Somebody wanted to um, say a prayer for the uh, for something at the end here. Yeah. For that Israel. Sure. The so after sure, sure I'll you go. Do that, and then, Sabrina, will you do something after that? Yep. I would like to do All one right. as yeah, well so, for the ocean. So okay, oh, yeah, whoever wants to do one. Uh, very good. No problem. Okay. Well, I'll begin. It's for the election that coming this uh, 17 for uh, our going to win. It's important for the relationship between Israel and the Gulf of Kinir and also for Israel itself, for uh, peace between Arabs and Israels. Uh, so I'll begin the prayer in uh, Hebrew. Hopefully you will help me in the three coming days in uh, praying for... Uh, a good outcome. Um, <coughs> me ten the Mar Itzrak Herzog is Kevana Achnubagofik Neo Nohal Taksher Venohal if Zroach Venohal Lalot Vimi ten the Komishipo in Saturday Shore Lao Vauri Israelhem Arbeava. Amen. Amen. Sarah, would you like to go next? Yes.
Namaste. Our now vibration reaches you and touches you. You are in our now in a joyful way. Our hearts are burning and your hearts are burning for a love of unity within the universe and within each of ourselves. We now come to you in a light that is bright but is within and with the eyes cannot be seen but with the heart can be felt. And therefore when we stream through you with our vibration of love, joy and understanding, you can feel us as you feel the beat of your heart. And we will now be part of you as you are part of us. Let us entangle in the now. Let us love in the now that we are the community of the universe and of the light and of the vibration of what is now. Thank you. Takata na 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 kuku, siyo lo kiyoko to na 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 kiyoko. Ani yo kiyoko, kusiya katana ni. Enyo kutu, kutu, kutu. Akiyo na 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 kutu, kiya akiyo. Ono ani ani ya. Akiyo to no kulu, siya kiya ki. Enyo kati. Atsu koto no luku, kusiya no kutu luku. Konia katu siya katu niyaki. Enio sariyo kutu niyaki ki. Asiyo no no kutu. Okiyo no no kutu siya ki. Enio lakiyo toko. Okiya na na kusiya li. Ekiyo na na siya ki. Hiyakalo uno kutu. Konu kosuku ali aki. Ania suwa ki. Isu no kutu. O siya na kiyoko, aliyo sa niyako, onos kutu kiya kiya kiyo si, e iyo no suku, onos suku, tiya siya niya kiyoko, onos suku luwa si, ano suku luwa, e niyo suku luwa nasa, tiyo suku alaki, iyo aniyaka, tono kutu kuwa, Eni aki aki a, ontu ali, o si anakatuku, ontu ali a kataka kiu, onuri a, anturi a kataka, oni ari a kutu, onti yusulu a ka, iyo, onu sokuru a ki a ki, anti ola na, tu sana katu si a ki, eni o kutu kulu a. Ana kata kia, ano aria ka, tu ana ka, ti yu si ane kotukua, enti alia kata kanoa. Guardians for your species, putting bandages on those things that were harmful to the timeline. But now we have come into a new understanding. We are now your friends as well as protectors. We are now your mothers and fathers, more than your just guardians, if you will. Our spirits have been united, and our hearts have been also connected in many ways. Mindfully, we watch over you and love you as our children and know you as those that can be trusted with our information, those that can spread the love, the peace, and the understanding that the world needs to know and the world needs to feel and grasp as a reality in their heart vibration. We no longer are just guardians, but we are the community that belongs together. We are the people and the friends that grow <coughs> with each day and learn from one another. Thank you. It's beautiful. Lovely. Thank you very much. 
So, thank you all. Thank, you. thank everybody for tuning in to today's Hukulo's webinar. Many thanks to Jim. Many thanks to everybody who's watching and has attended today. Of course, you can catch us on www.humancolony.org if some of the information has been useful today and you feel like making a donation. The PayPal exchange is wide and open. So Jim's just had an operation, so I'm sure he could do with a few bucks. So if you found it interesting, <laughs> found it useful, send us some cash and um, so you can go have a good pie tonight. And don't and forget, re remember don't forget the, the channeling workshop. Oh yes, um, Tuesday, 12 p.m. EST, there is a channeling workshop, so if anyone's interested in that, it's 20 bucks to join along, and you can practice your channeling skills and really, really, you know, break that edge or push yourself over, whatever you want to call it, that's the aim of the game. So if you're really passionate about doing that, get in touch on the website, leave your name, and, and, and then things will move forward from there, I guess. Yes. Right. Also, if there's plenty of room in the class right now. There's, uh, what, one, two, three, four. There's six places left So, uh, for the online one. We're going to have a workshop here in, uh, in, the, uh, in my house, too, but the online one is on Tuesday. We'll discuss amongst ourselves when the physical one is. So. Okay, perfect. And there's a possibility of doing one uh, in the evening in the week as well. So people that are working, people that have a difficult time, we put up an option there that you can you can join in as well at another time, just in case these times are not working out for people. Uh, sure, just to um, reiterate, that was 12 p.m. EST on Tuesday. I heard many buzzings. Yes. So, so thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back again next week, correct, Jim? Correct. Yes. Yes, we'll be back. Thank you, and, everybody. Uh, uh, sometime in the near future, Rob Gothier is going to be on uh, one of our webinars and do some channeling for us, too. That will be oh, great. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That would be great. That would be so lovely. Already. We'll have Rob, and he'll have announcements about the event coming up in June 20th also. So... Okay. Really cool. Okay. I'm excited about it, really. Yes, yes. So. Now, for, for that event, that would be people would be able to ask questions. What kind of a setup yeah. is it? It's an interactive event. Yes, it'll be online. It'll be four hours long. It'll start at 2 o'clock and end at 6. And it'll be uh, three different channelers. Myself, I'll be first. I'll be the first to channel at 2.15. And uh, so, as far as the itinerary is written so far, but of course, a lot could happen between now and June. But um, we've already got some people signed up for it, so it's really quite exciting. It's all the way out in June, and there's already people signed up to be online. Okay. So I cool. will definitely make a post on the website about it. So okay, thank you very much. And, um, if you go to Rob Gothier's site, there's a, videos and everything else. So okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Much everybody. Love to everybody. Much love. Bye. Namaste. Have love a wonderful, you. wonderful week. Much you love. Too. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.